<laughs> yeah, wow, two years. Almost. Just about two years old was the last time we left off here. Oh, so I figured, might as well knock this one out. <laughs> might as well go back and check off one more playlist that's incomplete. You never know, right? I hate that. I hate when people start a playthrough but then never fucking finish it. So hey, two years later, I'm finally getting around to finishing this one. I have no idea where we left off here. I do not remember in the foggiest what I was talking about with this game. Or... Only one way out. Only one way. You're doing a good job, buddy. We're all here for you. We're all... We're all here for you. Okay. Oh. Okay, then. I'll just leave you... I'll leave you to it. You do a good job, okay? How do you know you're not a patient? That would have been an interesting twist. How do you... I don't remember what the controls are. There we go. It is interesting to come back to this, because... Like, years later... This was one of the original helpless horror games out there. In addition to Amnesia, The Dark Descent, this was one of the originators of this genre, which I have talked about copiously since its release in regards to other games that have emulated this style. Oh. This style of, it's scary because you can't fight back. It's scary because when, they, when the monsters attack you, there's nothing you can do about it. And you just have to run and hide. So I forget the stuff I might have mentioned and talked about and gone into when we were playing it last time. Back when I was still streaming everything. That's such an interesting comparison also. The style of my recording back when I played this the first time compared to the style of my recording now that I'm playing it again. This time. Oh, there's nothing in here. I'm supposed to go through this door? There we go. Oh, Jesus. The fucking door scared me for no reason. The key to the house of God is in the theater. Behind the light. In the theater. Behind the light. You have to see the movie, so that's where I left the car. <laughs> okay? Friends! Children! I need your help! Retrieve the key from the. Yes, coming! I'm coming! I do remember that by this point, like, the uh, slow degradation of the main character throughout this game. This is the this is kind of the point where it start where it started to just completely lose it. And that was one of the strengths of this game, I think. The underrated strengths was how. Like, the main character actually has a character. Like, he doesn't talk all that often, but you can see by, like, looking through his notes. You can see what his character is, and that's more notable when com- That's actually, like- Notable in comparison to the DLC because there was a DLC for this game where you play as another character and that character had a measurably and noticeably different characterization to the notes that he wrote throughout the game. Because the character we're playing as now, I think it's Jack or something like that. 
Whatever this guy's name is. Miles Upshur. Yeah. So Miles Upshur here is like really fucking angry and vulgar. Like he's flipping the fuck out. Like he's so fucking pissed that he's stuck in this situation and he's swearing all the time and he's just like, God damn, this motherfucking haunted mansion of bullshit. What is going on there? Oh, shadows. Really fucked up pixelated shadows. It is funny though because like these early examples, these original examples of the helpless horror genre, as I have come to call it, because there's helpless horror and survival horror. Nazi scientists! The overwhelming fear, ecstatic rage, and English birds are insufficient. Nazi euphoria! Sounds like Doctor Strange loves anemic brother. <laughs> A line between science and Nazi mysticism. Why not both? Like I said, the main character is just slowly degrading, slowly going fucking insane no you think that they contacted something supernatural nothing is supernatural then what was it you said project wallrider was a gateway a gateway to what like the physical and emo and, and mental trauma of dealing with this whole screwed up situation is taking its toll. In a much more effective way, I feel, compared to what the sequel tries to do. In the second game, Outlast 2, they go for the the main character is crazy angle also, but I feel like it's a lot more cliche and trite the way they try to accomplish it in that game. In this one, you have to kind of read between the lines a little bit to really... chart the breakdown. I do forget what I'm supposed to be doing, though. Although, lately, helpless horror games like this, in, th in this vein, have actually started to... kind of... compromise a little bit. Like, Alien Isolation, for example, is a helpless horror game in this vein. At least in terms of dealing with the Xenomorph. But... 
There we go. You do have weapons to be able to deal with human enemies, so you're not completely helpless to deal with everything you're going to come across. And there's like a rudimentary crafting system to make things that will ward off the Xenomorph from fucking with you. You can't like get rid of it permanently, and it's just a temporary thing, but it's something to defend yourself with. A temporary defense, you're still... Wash those hands regularly. You're still expected to, by and large, depend almost entirely on stealth in order to deal with the threats. Ooh, short hops. Slightly faster this way. I forget how to run. Oh, it's a nudie boy. I'm gonna go through the door he just opened. Because why not? I'm an asshole like that. How do you run? I was doing it earlier. Oh, there we go. Fuck you. Am I going upstairs or downstairs? F your full frontal nudity. Ah, oh, full frontal nudity. Think I got time for that shit? Hey. That's impolite. How come I can't lock the doors? They can lock the doors on me, but I can't lock them on them. That seems unfair. Oh, hey. Ah, cheap. Everything's just locked doors and locked doors. The idea of a help of the of the helpless horror, as I like to call it, where the horror comes from, the fear comes from being completely defenseless. Yeah. I do, I do like that idea of, like, the slasher movie villain is coming at you, and you can't fucking fight him off. You can't deal with that shit, so you just gotta hide and hope that they pass you by. I mean, you see that in any given, like, Friday the 13th movie, any given slasher movie, there's that scene where the main character, like, hides in a locker or something, while the monster, while Jason or whoever or whatever, is, like, looking for him, and they're like, <gasps> And, like, cover their mouth, but still make way too much fucking noise. And, like, that isn't a, a very effective position to put your player into in a video game. But, like, the way it's been done in games since, and even including, this one to many degrees and in many ways. Like, I don't know, I feel like it could have been done better. Like, the fact that you just have no chance at all. That results in frustration, not fear.
like when the xenomorph comes at you and it sees you and there's no possible way you could ever outrun it and if it just sees you then it hits you and you're just fucking dead the end like reload the checkpoint and that's it that is the end of your fucking run right that's annoying Especially when it happens kind of over and over again. My job. You alone shall escape the time. This is your penultimate act of witness. With this game, at least, when you get snatched, when you get hit, you, 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 you can take more than one hit, generally. You will not record my death, my resurrection. And together, we will be free. But generally, I still find the idea of having absolutely no defense whatsoever. It makes it feel like it's out of your control a little bit. Yeah, when you're being burned alive like that, generally what's going to happen is the smoke will cause your lungs to collapse before the pain of the fire on your flesh is ever really going to start factoring in. At least if they do it right. <laughs> like the way Joan of Arc got burned. <laughs> ah. <laughs> That's great. I can't believe Father Martin what up Jesus in shitty ways to die. See? Fucking Miles Upshur. Miles Upshur is a great main character. What's up, boys? Yeah, you guys are being cool. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being cool. You know, I know we've had a rocky relationship. I know we've had it rough. I know we haven't always seen eye to eye on certain things. But yeah, I'm glad we can end things on good terms here. Okay, bye. It's gonna close these and hope that that fire starts spreading and you guys can have fun with that. <laughs> I'm sure I've talked about before the way I feel like the idea of using the camera the idea of using the camera to like document your experiences is such an underutilized concept. The second game actually does a little bit more with it, where when you record something and it triggers one of those, like, one of these narrative notes, it's actually like an audio file. Okay, then. The music sting is what I notice more than the actual thing. Nope. Bye bye. <laughs> nope. I don't even know if I'm going the right way. I like how he can't just open doors like a normal person. I think I lost them a little bit. Come on. Come on. Whew. Once again, the music does almost 90% of the job in causing the startles. And we are done. Bye bye, Dr. Jackson. I don't know who Dr. Jackson is. Yay! Freedom! Let freedom ring.
The door is even open. We can escape. Hooray. No. No. Why does this happen? So close yet so far. Just let the battery die. Find another way out. Poor Miles. Miles is having a bad day. Wow, check out... Fuck, check out the new digs. Like, my instinct is to have the camera out and record the entire game. But I've seen playthroughs where people, like, barely ever pull out the camera unless they're in a dark hallway and need to use the UV vision, right? So, like, they never fucking get any of these notes. Fuck, 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 fuck. I like how he wrote, fuck, period, fuck, 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 comma, fuck, comma, fuck, period. I'm not crazy. I know only crazy people say that. With a camera full of evidence. Don't call it gospel. A camera full of evidence. But like I said, I, I see people who play through this game and they like never take the camera out unless they're in a dark hallway and need the UV light like that. So they fucking miss all of these notes that only trigger. never trigger these notes, so they'd, like, never get this insight into Miles Upshur's character. And it's a little, like, you're missing out. Plus, I feel that Blair Witch Project instinct of, I gotta document everything. I am t you know how in found footage movies, where they're always like, why are they still filming? Let- drop the fucking camera, you fucking idiots. I'm that guy who's, like, still holding the camera, trying to document everything. Including my footprints. Being covered in blood. This area- this environment's really great, though, because it's well lit and stark white. So when you try and use the UV light in here, it's fucking blinding. And that'll be important in a momentito. We will explain why that's important soon. But hey, appreciate this Resident Evil-ass secret underground laboratory. Right? Hey, the survival horror game ended in a secret underground laboratory. Just like they're supposed to. Oh, I'm not reading all that. The second game did a little bit more interesting, where when you... When you get one of those, like, messages of you made a note because you saw a thing, it does, like, an audio file where you play back the video that you actually recorded. Like, it takes the footage that was recorded by your camera and it adds a little narration from the main character over top of it, which is really interesting. And it's getting closer to that idea I always like. Yay! That idea I always have of a game where you're playing, like, a journalist. Or some, like, like, either, like, the idea specifically that I had was you're playing as, like, a journalist in, like, a war zone. So part of the gameplay is avoiding getting fucking shot up while you're defenseless. You can't shoot back or anything. All you have is a camera to point and shoot with. And you're trying to document the activities going on in the war zone that you're stuck in the middle of. But here's the kicker. Here's the paper please-esque twist to the gameplay. It... Yep, that'll happen. Oh. Nope. Woo! 
is you have like after you leave the war zone you have to edit together all of the clips you recorded and make like a news segment with it yep <laughs> Look at him record. What a fucking asshole. I do not have control of this, by the way. This is part of the cinematic. Miles Upshur, the character, decided to do that. This is the way you die. Rip the pieces from the inside, watching your mirror scatter on the concrete wall. You escaped one hell, Chris Walker. God help me, but I somehow hope you don't find another. That's always a bummer, where, you, where, like, the way your main antagonist got killed is so fucking raw that you fucking feel bad for him. <laughs> That's how you know it's a shitty way to fucking die. Oh, wait. I have to go back. I remember now. So, that, uh, Walker was our nemesis for, like, the entire game up until this point. Everywhere we went throughout the game, from beginning to end, for all these three, two and a half hours, he Try to explain. has been the one following us and trying to antagonize us. There have been other pursuers, but Walker has been the primary one since the beginning. What, Prometheus? Oh. You know, when even a Nazi thinks your evil science is fucked up, you know it's bad. So what, do you fancy yourself Prometheus? So what, you think you brought fire to man? And now this... This is your punishment? <laughs> All of this is just the bird ripping out your liver, huh? Ah, go fuck yourself. Stop talking. Which way am I going? Am I going this way? No, I gotta go back. Yeah, that's it. So that's the big twist, is there's nothing supernatural that's going on. All this time, you think, oh, everyone's going nuts. Everyone's going crazy because of the spirits. The, the, the mountain spirits. That are possessing people. And you see the wall rider and you think, oh, it's this crazy mountain spirit that's gonna f fuck you up, right? 
But then you get to the end here, and the Nazi scientist is like, nah. It's fucking nanomachines, son. It was Metal Gear Solid 2 all along. Oh, shit. So here's where the cool uh, gameplay factor of this area comes into play, is the environment is stark white and bright, so when you use the UV light, you're blinded. But, if you don't use the UV light, shit, I'm dead. If you don't use the UV light, the wall rider is basically invisible. Unless, you know, it's close enough that it can kill you, in which case, doesn't make any difference. So, now, instead of using the UV light in order to see where you're going, you need to ration your use of the UV light and turn it off to see where you're going, because the only way you're going to know where you're going is if the UV light is off. But the only way you can see where the monster who's chasing you is at if you turn it on. So you have to trade whether you see where you're going versus being able to see the wall rider and know if it's about to get you or not. Which is a cool little twist on the, uh, on the gameplay up until now, right? I forget if this game has a quick turn. I don't think it does. Because the entire game up to now has been about navigating dark, shadowy environments that aren't lit. But now you're in a very well lit, very bright environment. And you have to navigate it while being chased. By something you can only see with this turned on. So now the final pursuer has replaced Walker, like something said so that's like, so, the, the final antagonist is the one that's so badass that it killed the one that's been chasing you from all this time. Killing you wouldn't be murder, it'd be mercy. Sit tight. <laughs> You'll be dead soon enough. Or at least one of us will be. Why not both? <laughs> no reason we can't both die here today. Is this really where you want to be, dude? I think of better places. <laughs> So to me, it would have been really fun and interesting if by the end of the game here, you would have the option of being able to, like, watch all of the footage you recorded throughout the game. Like, actually be able to see if you can splice a movie or something together with all of the shit you recorded on your camera. But mostly it's just used as a device to be able to see in the dark. But I can think of a lot of really fun, interesting utilities you can use with that kind of gameplay mechanic that thus far haven't really been taken advantage of that I'm aware of yet in other games. The lever is lies the part machine so Fuck it all! Break it all! Kill them all! Kill them all! Kill them all! Excuse me. Yeah, there's a quick turn, I forget what it is. Somehow, closing the doors behind you will impede the wall rider. Cause he's not a ghost, remember? He's an amalgamation of nano machines 
floating around through the air, being controlled by that guy in the fucking tube. He's not a ghost. He's not incorporeal. He can't just pass through solid matter. The nano machines have to be able to fit through the cracks somehow. Oh, this is gonna be a lot of running. Have you ever done a stairmaster? Have you ever walked up this many flights of stairs? Miles Upshur has got to be fucking exhausted. Oh, this is gonna be fun to run all the way back down too, isn't it? Yeah, I gotta look forward to walking all the way back down all that, right? Whee! Hell with that shit. Jesus. The fucking music stings. I hate playing games like this with headphones on. Because the music stings are always so fucking like, ah! Like it's the music that's startling me more than anything else. Because the music's like so fucking sudden and shrill. <laughs> he's like, he's like afraid that it's gonna explode in his face or something. One last file. How much you want to bet? Nope. Okay. Oh, time to run all the way back down to all those stairs, am I right? Yep, nope. <laughs> oh, air combo. Fucking... Ow! Ah, uh, that's a good time. How is this man still alive? Christ. He had his fingers amputated, he got battered and bruised, thrown through glass and wood doors, fell down at least one or two stories of stairs. Now what? I pull out anything here, or is it up here? Ah, oh, damn it. Oh, I did something. <laughs> like, suddenly. Ow! How is this man alive? How's that camera still functioning? Miles Upshur and the no good, very bad day. Miles Upshur and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. <laughs> ah, now we got a limp. Whether I escape or die. I am free. That's a good line. And look, now we got a permanent limp going on here. Poor Miles. Poor baby. He's all fucked up. <laughs> The fact that you can look down and see your body is also very helpful. Come on, buddy. 
You're almost out, buddy. You're almost out. All this bullshit and you're almost done. Just a few more steps. Just one more step and then one more after that and then one more after that. <laughs> you can make it. It's gonna be okay. Listen to the peaceful music. Come on. Yep. The end, and that's Outlast. <laughs> yeah, I'm just not even gonna elaborate on that ending. Take away from it what you will. Uh, you know, like, eat, like... It's interest. again, it's interesting looking back on this game after seeing the influence it, and to a lesser or greater degree, Amnesia the Dark Descent before it has had on video games. Because, like, these games, like, Amnesia in particular, but I feel like this game also really started a trend in the horror gate, like, genre. Where, like, it felt like for a while a lot of games were taking inspiration from this style. And it's only lately, recently that survival horror has started coming back and that was one of the biggest concerns and worries i had about resident evil 7 was like oh god they're not just gonna fucking pull an outlast are they they're not just gonna make it like you're totally helpless and you have to sneak and hide around so that jack doesn't get you right thankfully it was much more classically survival horror than you would have been led to believe. But that was like such a valid concern there for a little bit, because it was like, no, don't let the survival horror king fall prey to this convention, this trend. And it is actually really nice, I think, that survival horror, traditional survival horror, is making a comeback, because like, there's nothing wrong with helpless horror if it's done well, and that's the thing, because, like, this game definitely accomplishes what it set out to do. It did the thing that it was trying to do. It succeeded in its intentions. But it's not the kind of experience from the horror game that I prefer to have. The one where you, like, just have, like, it's kind of completely out of your hands, right? It feels a little bit like you have less control and have less input in whether or not, you know, you succeed and get through the area or are hit with a fail state and have to start over. And, like, it feels like games in this vein are trying to come to a little bit of a weird little compromise where you're helpless but you can still defend yourself and it's it's an it's it's an improvement but like overall it still feels like ah come on like you got caught in like that shit might as well just put the controller down and wait for the death animation to finish but like the what followed aside this game I still feel like it stands up, you know? It has those frustrations of that genre still in play, and still making it kind of like, uh, come on. But, uh, although, like, again, there are things this game presented that I feel like... It's, it's, it's weird to me that the games industry 
took the things about this game that were kind of the not great parts and followed that inspiration and the things that I thought were pretty interesting and could have been expanded on were the ones that were left by the wayside. But anyway, there's also a DLC campaign called The Whistleblower. Uh, but I don't know if I'm ever gonna get around to doing that or not. I'm kinda done. <laughs> like, I've been done. That's why it took me so long to finally be like, okay, let's put a finished, let's put a complete next to that playlist. And again, this is a fun little compare and contrast. I compare the last video of me playing this game to this one and compare the style, right? Compare how it's changed. How far I've come in two years where I don't fucking stream anymore, thank God. But yep, hopefully Sonic Forces will be coming up very soon after this, but we'll see. Thank you guys for watching.